Yes, hello and welcome to the Business of Property podcast. I'm Stuart. And I'm Simon. And we talk every week about the reality of running our property businesses, as well as anything and everything property. Simon owns buy to and created Patma, a leading portfolio management software system and a source of property market insights. And Stuart runs a portfolio of co-living properties with a six-figure turnover. And this week's episode is going to be about the positive reasons that we should persevere in property. And on that subject of positivity and property and property insights, please do join our email BOP tribe. Simply click on the link in the show notes below. That will take you where you need to go. Put in your details and we will start sending out some information very soon. We do have our onboarding sorted and we are going to start sending out insights from Patma that we think will be quite useful and relevant to anyone investing in property. Now, onto the subject of today, Simon and I, as we do, talk about property quite often. And we were talking about why we are persevering in this market and the positive reasons. Now, we've got a number of those reasons, which we're going to touch on in today's podcast, particularly around things like the number of people requiring properties to rent, uh, the fact that voids are going down, that rents along with inflation have increased. But the big topic that we're going to start with today is just around the fact that things like inflation do actually devalue the borrowing that we have on properties. Now, we're going to get into that subject, but we thought the best way to do that really would be to talk through a real example, which Simon has. And Simon's got the numbers. So Simon, do you want to kick us off really with a with why inflation is not always negative and, and how that's related to this property that we're going to talk about? So th- this is going to be all about the, the power of leverage. And of course, leverage can be bad in certain situations. And for today, we're going to judiciously ignore them and talk only about the positives. <laughs> That's it. This is a positive <laughs> Wednesday today. <laughs> so, so yes, please, please do bear in mind that if this goes wrong in different scenarios, leverage can be bad. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about the good stuff. And this particular scenario, it's, it's not cherry-picked per se, but it happens to coincide with a period of time and a physical location where all of the numbers went in the right direction and things worked very nicely. So it, it, is a, it is a positive example, but it is also a very real example. So this is a, a property, um, a rental property that I purchased back in 2017. And as it happens, it was a, a, already a buy to let. I, I bought it with tenants in situ. And when that tenancy ended, I did have to do some repairs and redecoration and there were, were costs involved in that, as well as obviously all the normal purchase, stamp duty, solicitors, etc. costs, which we're, we're going to be glazing over today. They don't change the outcome very dramatically, but obviously bear in mind, we, we are simplifying things a bit today. So, so the, the core numbers we're going to start with, and, and even these are slightly rounded to simplify things, but I purchased the property for about £310,000. And I put in a deposit of about £105,000, which meant I had a mortgage of about £205,000. And it was about a 65% loan to value. Now, roll on five years, and we're taking this up to sort of around the end of last year. The estimated value of that property was about £460,000. And I have not extended my borrowing on it. So I still have a mortgage of £205,000. Now, that is obviously over about a five-year period. It's an increase in property value of about 48% or about 9.5% per year. So obviously, we're talking about a fairly fortunate time period in a fairly fortunate location in order to achieve those sorts of figures. But, but there we are. So has anyone worked out what's happened to my equity in that time? How about you, Stuart? Have you you've done those calculations? <laughs> 
Well, it took us a while, didn't it? But um, yeah, so as you said originally, you, you were you purchased with a 65% loan to value, which is the 205,000 as a percentage of the, the three, circa 310 purchase price. But that 205,000 against the new valuation is now 43% loan to value. Exactly. So if the mortgage has gone down, which of course it hasn't gone down, that the pounds I owe are still the same. And, and in actual fact, in the real world, they've gone up slightly because I've had mortgage fees and things like that over this time. But for, the, for our simplified example, the pounds have stayed the same, but the value of those pounds relative to the value of the property has dropped from 65% to only about 43%. And that, of course, means that my equity in the property has grown from 105000 to about £255,000. Now, is there anyone listening who's, who's done the quick maths to work out how much of an increase my equity in this property has had? I'm afraid we haven't got any audience members here to actually speak and answer. So, so it falls to you, Stuart. Yeah, so you're, you're 100... Well, we talk about equity, but that's the money you put in of 105000 But now your equity is 255000 so essentially you've 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 increased your equity in the property by 150,000 now I want to caveat that with saying on paper because right now it is all on paper and just to be no 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 this is money in my bank I can spend it can't I <laughs> until it's sold it's not crystallized and and as Simon knows one of my biggest bugbears is that so what we are talking about here today is we're talking about the positives and reason why we are persevering in property. But the the mortgage is still owed. So the £205,000 is still money owed. That hasn't gone away. That's still there. However, the property itself has now essentially reduced that borrowing because essentially Simon could, if he did sell that property, use the £150,000 well, and whatever he likes, but actually he's coming away with more than he started. And that's really the power, you know, as we know, the power in property. Exactly. Yeah. So the equity, as you said, it's gone 105,000, 255,000. And that's an increase of 143% over those five years, 143% increase in the cash available in that property. And if you work that out as an annualized figure, that's 28% per year 28 percent return on yeah. on the equity that i put into that property just in the value of the property and of course you're absolutely right there, there are other factors in that but but just sort of at the simplest level that's that's just seems incredible and just to, to sort of really emphasize what this could or how powerful this could be, if you'd, or if I, <laughs> this is a real example. So if I had started with an 85% loan to value mortgage, the, the equity more than triples. It's absolutely crazy. But then of course, just, but just tin, tinsy bit of negativity. If, if the property had fallen in value by just 20,000 pounds, then the equity value would have halved. So, so yeah, it's, it's, there is some danger there. But anyway, the positive, the equity. I mean, it's just incredible returns. Where else, Stuart, can you get a 28% per year return on your cash? Well, I, I suggest investing in crypto. That's what I would suggest. <laughs> I, I, I say no it firmly, comment. <laughs> I say it firmly tongue-in-cheek, just for anyone who doesn't know. Simon doesn't have a great experience with crypto. And of course, none of what we say should ever constitute financial advice. Um, and the, yeah, again, just in terms of, for the sake of just ensuring that we, we're not trying to tip the balance, because of course, Simon and myself are inherently biased. We love property. We like investing in property. Why wouldn't we? However, as I was talking to Simon, you know, I know people that did buy in the early 2000s and, and we ourselves have talked about buying in 2007, 2008, which was at the peak of property prices. So it just so happens, as Simon said, that th this purchase was bought right about the right time for the values. But of course, as we know, we are 
you know, heading into a, a sort of at least a flat and, you know, and a lot of people, including Simon, saying, you know, in a year's time, property values are going to be lower. So although these numbers are unbelievably impressive, it doesn't mean that whenever you buy, they're going to be that impressive in five years. This is just just a good timing and, and does in some way really sort of push me towards thinking about the, you know, the 18 ish year property cycle. And thinking about how how that is quite interesting, but as always, I think the the guiding point for us is if 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 we are buying for ten years plus, provided we haven't bought at the the very nadir at the very bottom of the market, which I know some people have, and I know some people that are selling properties where they are just really covering the mortgage left. So we're not saying that that doesn't happen, but this is a really good reason about why property. Is a good investment because it's it's a, it's an asset. It is providing income, and you're getting, based on current numbers, you know, th- almost thirty percent return a year on on the equity on the paper equity. Indeed, indeed. And I, I just when I actually put these figures into a spreadsheet and worked it out and and worked out that percentage return, it just just seems crazy. It seems unreal. So yeah, perhaps someone can can point out the error in my maths, and I, I've probably done it all wrong, and I'm actually making a loss. I'm I'm not sure, but but it, it yeah, it seems no. incredible. On those numbers, on those numbers, definitely not. So we need to uh, talk about some other positives. What what else is is good for persevering in the property market at the moment, Stuart? You mentioned a, a couple in your your intro, so perhaps we should should dig into those a bit more. Well, I think I think the natural progression, if we think about the you know the, the property value. Why is the property value increased? Well, generally because inflation. And if we're thinking about inflation, which is is the hot topic of the moment, then inflation is on everything we buy and pay for, including rents. And as we've talked about before, that means you know that we that rents and the, the prices people pay for rent is is going to increase, and that's a positive because. Again, if we're aligning it with market rates and we're not doing anything extortionate, then that's a perfectly natural progressing in, in our property businesses to make sure that we're getting what we need. And particularly with rising interest rates and the Bank of England recent increase again. Shh, shh. No, no, not negative, not negative. <laughs> keep, keep on the positive. So <laughs> increasing rents is one. And I know, you know, in our business that we've we've done that recently for at least sort of 70% of our rooms. And so that's so that's a positive. It's you know we're not standing still. Yeah, and despite those increasing rents, we're still seeing in certainly our, our areas and many other areas of the country, although maybe not everywhere, but we're still seeing increase in demand as well as increasing rents. So we are looking at it being much easier to rent properties than, than it has been five years ago or so, and. That that obviously feeds through into much shorter voids, much easier rental process. Although in some cases it can actually be a bit harder dealing with, with so many inquiries, but, but overall, it's all positive on that front. And I think with a lot of the the sort of direction of of travel in the the landlord sort of market, is there a landlord market? I'm not sure about that. But anyway, we'll, we'll say that. It seems that it is only reducing, and hence, I think that competition for rental properties, given current trends, is probably going to continue to increase for a while yet. And and for people who stick in the market and can make the finances work, that's got to be positive, because it is just going to be much easier to rent, and the rents are going to still stay at higher levels they may, they may not keep going up because they're going to hit an affordability ceiling if, if they haven't already but they are going to stay stay high at least they're not going to start falling back again so so yeah I, I think while it is obviously bad news and challenging for the tenants from being an investor point of view I, I think it's a, a quite a good time to to invest because it's just so easy to rent. I mean, I, I would also say that, yeah, increasing prices is not good for anyone that's paying those prices. And we, we are all suffering from inflation. But this is the market we're in. You know, and same for us with mortgages. 
our mortgages aren't getting lower because the, the banks don't offer us discounts when the rates go down, just like they don't, um, you know, give us give us freebies. So it, it kind of is what it is. And, and as you say, demand has has com- completely continued to increase. And I think particularly in the buy to let market, the the only caveat for, from my side is, of course, if you're dealing in HMOs and rooms, you're still dealing with a highly transient tenant, potentially. So they're not as they're not, you know, they don't have such longevity in terms of occupancy. However, you know, it's still a positive in terms of that you do see fewer voids. So I know in, certainly in, in the buy to let and touch wood, we've, we've seen definitely a lower rate of voids in, uh, in HMO land as well. So, you know, the, the, the demand does mean, as you say, easier to rent, which is a real positive. And if occupancies maintaining or increasing in terms of the the tenant length of stay then that too is really positive yep indeed and as we run out of time and have to bring this to to a conclusion uh, i think that it's just good to try and concentrate on some of the the positive things and reasons why landlords can look forward to the future in the short term as well as in the sort of 10, 20, 30 year time frame, which we're, we always recommend as sort of a, a good property investment outlook. And there's, there's a lot of negativity about at the moment in, in the, the landlord ecosphere around the, the renters reform bill and all sorts of new regulation and scary interest rates and, and all, all the other things. So, so I think it's, it's good to, to look at some, some of the good things that, that are, are being presented to us at the moment. Yeah, my view is that any sector has challenges. It just so happens we're having a lot of challenges at the moment. But final bonus from me is that we are seeing the number of landlords decrease. Apparently, it's going down by around 3.5% year on year. And that means that there are fewer landlords. So, Hopefully, less competition. Still competition, but less of it. And who knows? There might even be an opportunity for people to take former, formerly owned landlord properties to onboard into their portfolio. So that also is an opportunity there. Another bonus. And we've reached the end of this particular episode. And hopefully, you've enjoyed our positive spin, which we happen to believe is true, not just spin. But if you have enjoyed anything we've talked about today and you've listened to more than two episodes, then please do leave us a rating on your podcast player of choice. It really does help the show. And we ask for nothing else in return other than that. So please just go to your podcast player and leave us a rating and review if you're feeling really generous. Until next week. Listener.